discover solutions to issues that affect your family and professional life with practical information to help you get past life's adversities. Take a proactive approach to power up your life with Rosalie's expert resources. Not all mothers and daughters are famous like Goldie Hawn and Kate Hudson. It's a tough job being a mother today and balancing work, family, and taking on a responsible and cautious approach to parenting. There's a fine line between being your daughter's best friend and confidant versus an authoritative figure and disciplinarian. Developing family relationships creates challenges in handling life's sticky situations, whatever the situation. As a middle child, I was always thankful for the loving care my mom gave us all and knew my mom just wanted us to love, respect, and spend some special time together. Here with tips to handling life's sticky situations and keeping moms happy is best-selling author Jane Buckingham. Good morning, Jane. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Jane, tell us about some sticky situations and how to pull ourselves out of it without hurting ourselves or mom. Oh gosh, you know, I think there's so many different situations, especially with mom, because mom wants to feel like you appreciate her, like you love her, um, like you understand her, like you value her. And I, I think it's hard as we find our own independence to to find the, the connection between you two without anybody feeling like, you know, they were misunderstood or misjudged. How can mom keep communications flowing when she's on a budget? You know, I think a big part of it is finding new information that you can share together. Um, I just went on to Ancestry.com, and what's great is that it gives you your whole family history. You can get a membership, so it's something where you can go on, figure out where did you guys come from, where, who were you named after, and all of those things that connect you as a family, whether it's to grandparents, to grandkids, mom to daughter, sort of lets you find out sort of where you both have stood in history. After your mother dies, you look back at all the special mother times you had together. Those memories were great. Long chats, lunch out, some shopping, and just having mother-daughter time. You know, I, I lost my mother as well, and I think that we do, and I'm so sorry, because I think that our mother is so important and there's no one who can replace her. And so things that you can remember her by, letters she wrote, making sure that you guys take lots of pictures together. You know, my kids, I asked them for the HP Envy all-in-one printer because my kids can print them out from their iTouch. I can print them out from my iPhone. Another thing that he gave me, which I thought was great, was he gave me this Two Smiles gift card that he printed out last minute, which is sort of, he he designed it and the kids designed it, but then it's, we can go to Chili's together, pick another retailer. So at least I know my kids are thinking about me. Even just having pictures of my mother around, you know, is something that connects my, my future generations to the past. So what's the key to keeping a great relationship with mom now and forever? Honesty, you know, I think that it's about honesty and empathy because I think that we all, especially with our moms, sometimes we give them a hard time, but if we're honest and we keep those that dialogue open, it's something that allows her to feel like she's involved in our life and us to feel like we, we value her as a person, not just someone who chauffeured us around for half of our life. According to the latest U.S. Remodeling Sentiment Report survey, 58% of homeowners report that the economy is having minimal effect on remodeling plans. And spring summer inspires many homeowners to refresh and remodel. And the kitchen and bathroom remodels tie for the most popular projects with 57% votes from homeowners. And most people like to start with the kitchen. Elaine Griffin, renowned designer and author of several books on design, including Design Rules, The Professional Guide to Do-It-Yourself Homestyle, is here with remodeling tips. Good morning, Elaine. Good morning. Elaine, you're a hands-on woman. You look at a room and you have a vision. So give us some of your tips on design rules. The kitchen is the one room of the house that really is command central. And if you live in an open plan home, which is like super popular right now, it's frequently the first thing you see when you walk into the door. So you want to plan it brilliantly. Remember that you need style and function. And remember essentials like the work triangle. That's the space between your refrigerator, your cooktop, and your sink. And you want to keep that as small a footprint as you can. When we budget our kitchen renovation, we end up trying to save money on the appliances. 
So what's the secret behind staying on budget and having a great looking kitchen? Here's the secret. You want to look for appliances that come in suites because they're de designed to go together. They look sleek, they're fantastic, and you can add one in whenever you can, you know, as far as budget goes. So I'm crazy about the ones from Electrolux, and they have great features like the refrigerator. Now, speaking of fridges, here's what's new in the fridge world. Look for counter depth of refrigerators so you can get the built-in look. That means that you actually recess them into the wall. If you want a French door fridge with a bottom mount freezer that gives you optimum storage space, the door swing takes up less, less of a footprint, and look for great features on the inside like a perfect temp drawer that really allows you to keep your food at the perfect temperature for whatever it is. So give us some more tips on design style rules. Remember that you want style and function. Think about things like, you know, after your, after your cabinets, of course, let's consider the countertops. You want something that um, you want something that really expresses your personality. And remember things, space gaining things, like you know, a cooktop surface. I love the induction cooktops because you can use them as workspace when you're not cooking. They stay cool to the touch. Is remodeling the kitchen the best investment to upgrade a home? You know what, I will tell you that the kitchen is the one room of the house where you never lose your investment. Lighting can really tie a kitchen together. So how can we make a statement with our lighting style? The secret there is to create lighting by zones and you want some lighting specific, you know, lighting specifically for each zone, something for the breakfast nook, something for, you know, over your island. And we have a ton of great ideas to create your stylist kitchen at electroluxappliances.com. Planning for a new baby or first baby entails lots of time and energy before and after a remodeling project. More on first time mothers getting older when we return. Are you getting this, honey? Oh, prime time. We are rolling. <laughs> All right, mama's gonna bring it home. Mama's okay. gonna bring it home. Okay, okay. okay. Come on, watch this guy. Oh, oh I... backwards. Oh, Woo! don't. Oh. Okay. It went into Bob and Carol's yard. Oh, no? Okay. Yeah. Here it is. Oh, oh. oh. oh my God. Challenge your kids to be active and eat healthy. Yeah, All right, let's see what you can do. Let's go. They might let's surprise you. Search We Can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. This is one amazing truffle tree. Can you imagine a place where these grow everywhere? Yes, it's called the forest. A magical place to enjoy with your family. So discover the forest and explore all the wonder that's there. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. First time mothers today are 3.5 years older than they have been in the past three decades. A baby's birth is a special unique time in a family's life. And it's a time of joy and exhaustion. New moms put lots of time and energy and really learn quickly the baby's needs are number one. Joining us with some tips for first time mothers is Lori Richman, editor of thebump.com, the go-to site for all things pregnancy and babies. Good morning, Lori. Hi, Rosalie, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Life's never the same once baby is born and mom knows the true meaning of sleep deprivation. As a tired new mom, what can make her feel special? Well, a stylish new mom really wants to keep up with the trends, but also express her personal style. But she's got a new family to deal with now. So Pandora has a lot of great customizable jewelry options to help her celebrate those unforgettable moments in life, like having a baby. So you can start a new family tradition with one of their charm bracelets. They have really cute charms, especially for celebrating the new addition. There's a baby carriage and a little teddy bear. The piece of my heart dangle charm is also really pretty. Some new moms are constantly on the go. What's a gift that's perfect for an active mom on the go? 
This is a mom who's just looking to steal a few minutes of quiet out of her busy schedule, or maybe she just needs a quick pick-me-up from the middle of the night feedings. She can make the perfect cup of coffee, tea, or other drink in less than a minute with no mess and no stress. So how about a creative mom with a sentimental streak? Yes, this mom is really going to appreciate a creative and personalized gift that you put together yourself. So why not make a video montage of all the photos and videos that have been captured since the baby's been born? And you can make a professional looking video in just minutes with Animoto.com. It's so easy. You upload your files, choose from one of their video styles. There's a lot of great designs. You can add words, captions, even a music soundtrack. And then through the magic of Animoto, in just a few minutes, you have a video that looks like it was done by a pro. You can share it on social media or even burn it to a DVD. Babysitting is also another great gift. All moms appreciate that. And then while they're babysitting, if they cook dinner for you too, that's even better. Where can we find more information, Lori? For more on these gifts, you can visit thunknews.com slash new moms. And for more on pregnancy and baby, you can visit us at thebump.com. Did you know 19% of Floridians speak Spanish and it's the most widely taught second language? Learn how to prepare your child for the future when we return. Now, come, come on, on. Mom, come on! Right. I know, two seconds. Hang on, just stand still. Stand still, love. Come on. One second. Come on. Just come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. You must be your fairy godmother. It doesn't take a fairy godmother to tell you that the right fit means everything. Especially when it comes to car seats. Always choose one that's the right fit for your child's age and size. Oh, that does make a difference. <laughs> Remember, their happily ever afters are in your hands. To find out more, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Speaking a second language benefits all communities all around our state. Scientific research has shown babies, toddlers, and preschoolers are uniquely equipped to learn one or more languages with ease. According to multiple studies, children who learn a second language tend to have superior reading, writing, analytical, and social skills. Julia Pimsler Levine is a Forbes.com contributor and founder and creator of Little Pim, the leading language learning program that introduces young children to a second language. Good morning, Julia. Good morning. So Julia, why did you create Little Pim? I grew up in the language teaching business. My father created the Pimsleur method, which is one of the most widely used methods for adults to learn a foreign language. And then when I had my sons, I wanted them to learn French. I grew up bilingual in French, and I always thought that was the, the best gift that my parents ever gave me. I wanted my kids to have that too, and there was nothing easy and fun to get them started. So that's when I decided to create the series of Little Pim. I too learned a second language as a child because my parents and grandmother were all from Italy, and they spoke Italian when they wanted to talk privately, and I wanted to know what they were talking about. More and more kids are learning two languages now. As parents realize that'll be a really big benefit for them in our global economy, and also as all the research comes out, what a brain booster it is for children to learn a second language. Even if they don't become fluent, just the act of learning a second language improves memory, improves analytic abilities. It's a huge head start in school. And kids do learn just by absorbing, like you did. Our entertainment immersion method exposes kids to 360 words and phrases through a really fun video series. And they're just watching, listening, having fun. They don't even know they're learning. The reasons it's such a good brain boosting activity is that the act of learning the second language gets going the part of the brain that handles memory, multitasking, analytic skills. That's why you're so smart. <laughs> So there you have it. So how can parents help support their child in their growth to learn a second language? Kids don't see language learning as a chore. It's a game to them. And so we want to keep bringing in things that keep it fun. So flashcard games, books, 
music, put on the music and dance around with them, learn the lyrics together. We have so many families using Little Pim as a family activity. They'll all watch the videos and then play a game of who can find the most words in the home and name them in Spanish. Things like that keep it really fun for them. Why does music and singing help children recall pronunciation and vocabulary? Music is a great way to help reinforce a second language. When kids are listening to music, they're getting the part of their brain working that absorbs language as well. And it's also a great place to reinforce the vocabulary that they've learned in other contexts. In our music, for instance, we have the same words that they've learned in the video series. So hearing them in that other context when they're dancing and singing and playing really helps that to sink in. How about parents learning and joining in with their children to learn that second language at the same time? Or is it more difficult for adults to learn? As an adult, to speak Chinese, for instance, it's very difficult. It's a tonal language. Your brain can't even necessarily distinguish between those different tones. Kids' brains really are different. They are hardwired to learn up to three languages without any confusion. They're like sponges at that age, zero to six. So that's really the best time to get them going. As a parent, you can just accompany them on that journey, and you can even do it together. A lot of parents think it's fun to learn with their kids. Last year, millions of consumers bought potentially dangerous cars due to unfixed recalls. New research from Carfax shows that nearly 2.1 million cars with open recalls were for sale online last year. Used car buyers and sellers everywhere need to check for open recalls to ensure they're putting safe cars on the road and not endangering themselves and others on the road. Unfortunately, the Lemon Law in Florida does not apply to used cars. Larry Camachi, car and consumer expert and Carfax Communications Director, joins us to share a new free service that's offered to save lives. Good morning, Larry. Good morning. How can consumers looking on or offline for a used vehicle protect themselves from buying a car that has an open recall? Well, the number one thing that a consumer can do when they're shopping for a used car is to ask the seller to provide a Carfax vehicle history report. If an open recall has been reported to Carfax, if a safety recall has been reported to us, it'll be included on the Carfax vehicle history report. It'll give you specific information about what that recall covers and tell you how to get it fixed. So when you're shopping for a used car, make sure you ask for the Carfax report. But more importantly, if you own a car, you can now sign up for a free service from Carfax at mycarfax.com. Just give us your email address and the license plate of your car, and we will monitor that vehicle for free and let you know if the manufacturer issues any safety recalls on the car you currently own. What problems can result from buying a car with an open recall that has not been addressed? Well, manufacturers will issue a recall when they see a car has any issue related to its safety and performance. The great news for consumers is that it's super simple to get these things fixed. All you have to do is go to your local dealer and they'll look into the problem, they'll tell you exactly what steps need to be taken to fix it, and the overwhelming majority of time, these issues get fixed for free. Last year, more than 90,000 vehicles were listed for sale online in the state of Florida with an open recall. And that's only the tip of the iceberg because there are still thousands of more vehicles that are on Florida highways being driven by people who may not know that there's an open recall on their car. This is a big problem, and we all need to work together to reduce the number of safety recalls that are left unrepaired. Why are open recalls a problem for consumers? They'll find out if an open recall, if a safety recall has been reported to Carfax by the manufacturer, and we'll give them advice about what to do to get that recall fixed. The overwhelming majority of time, it just involves a trip to your local dealer, and it'll be, and, and it is usually free for the owner of the vehicle to get that issue repaired. Then, if there is a recall or a future recall, Carfax will notify them. 
The best thing to do is register at mycarfax.com, M-Y-C-A-R-F-A-X.com. Give us your email and your license plate, and we will monitor your vehicle for free. It's a brand new service from Carfax. Sign up today. You realize that 49 million Americans struggle with hunger? That's one out of every six Americans. These people are around us every day. They're our friends, they're our coworkers, their kids go to school with our kids. Sometimes we're not even aware that they're struggling. This problem is closer than you think. But so is the solution. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. Can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner okay. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Do you know one item a woman can keep in her handbag that can potentially save her life? Over 250,000 women die of a heart attack each year, and yet most women's handbags are better prepared for a broken nail or a bad hair day than a heart attack. In fact, less than one quarter of women carry aspirin in their handbag, and if taken during a heart attack, aspirin can reduce the risk of death and lessen a heart attack's damaging effects. Dr. Tracy Stevens, cardiologist and member of Women Heart National Scientific Advisory Council, joins us with life-saving facts to introduce handbags and hearts from the National Coalition for Women with Heart Disease. Good morning, Dr. Stevens. Good morning. I personally watched the devastation that a heart attack took to my mother and changed her quality of life forever. I try to be aware of some of the symptoms to prevent this from ever happening to me. So Dr. Stevens, how can women recognize and be prepared for a sudden heart attack? Well, I'm sure, Rose, you can understand then the importance of this life-saving campaign. Handbags and Hearts is truly that, a life-saving campaign that has been launched by Bayer with partnership with Women Heart, the National Coalition for Women with Heart Disease, leveraging that link between women and their handbags, recognizing we as women rarely leave home without them. In this campaign, women are encouraged to carry aspirin in their handbag. And as you said, to learn to be proactive about their heart health, to recognize the symptoms of a heart attack, and to never hesitate to call 911 and to chew that aspirin as directed. Why are women more vulnerable to heart disease than they think? I think that one of the main reasons is we're not aware this is our number one health threat. And this is our number one health threat. Heart disease kills more women than all forms of cancer combined. It's the leading cause of death in women over the age of 35. It's not a disease just for old women. They don't recognize the symptoms. Instead of that elephant on the chest, it may be shortness of breath, indigestion, pain between the shoulder blades, neck, jaw, even toothache. One of the symptoms that worries me the most as a cardiologist in my practice is that woman who says, I have developed new overwhelming fatigue. This is a red flag that we need to check out that woman's heart. So not being aware this is their number one health threat and recognizing symptoms, we delay seeking attention. And that's the importance of this handbags and heart campaign. It encourages women to know what to do to be prepared to carry that aspirin in their handbag. Explain to us the role that aspirin takes when a heart attack begins. Aspirin's actions basically are to inhibit platelets, the sticky cell that contributes to clot formation, which occurs in a heart attack. It's that clot that blocks the blood flow through that artery to our heart, which then 
kills our heart muscle, resulting in heart failure and death. And so the aspirin is a very important component in the setting of a heart attack to lessen that damage and to improve the likelihood that one will survive a heart attack. There are support groups throughout the state of Florida to help women with heart disease. How can they get involved? It is so important to visit womenheart.org. Womenheart is the national coalition for women with heart disease. They represent the 42 million women in our country living with or at risk for heart disease. Womenheart champions organize support groups within one's area and it's a great connection for women to learn to be more proactive about their heart health. And, th and thus that supports this campaign, Handbags and Hearts, as well. Today's show focused on first-time moms having baby at an older age. It can make for a healthier mother-daughter relationship. Effective communicators are attentive and never hold judgment. Learning a second language promotes an active and expanded mind that can give you more communication opportunities. Take time to learn about your family heritage and share those memories with those you love. And be a responsible motorist before buying. Research your car history for any open recalls to ensure your family's safety as well as the motorists on the road. And take a proactive approach to heart health by keeping aspirins in your handbag or wallet. And share with us your cause at facebook.com forward slash rose dot Lee or join us at rosaleearchershow.com. Will the solutions to this show's issues help you or a loved one? Find shows like this and others on our website at rosaleearchershow.com. <laughs>